My name is James Wolfe. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Advocates and I'm uh, sitting uh, here with uh, Lord Pentland, the Chair of the Scottish Law Commission. Uh, the Scottish Law Commission has uh, recently published its uh, annual review for 2015 uh, and I'm going to ask Lord Pentland some questions about the uh, work of the uh, Commission. And perhaps the first question, Lord Pentland, is uh, what is the Scottish Law Commission? The Scottish Law Commission is a um, law reform agency which was uh, set up by uh, the UK Parliament in 1965 and our purpose essentially is to improve, simplify and update the law of Scotland. How do you go about that work? Consultation is uh, central to what we do and by that I mean consultation with the public we uh, have to ensure that recommendations for reform of the law, which we are developing, uh, are built upon uh, a clear understanding of the problems faced by people at the sharp end. So before we develop any proposals to uh, change the law, we will carry out a thorough analysis of the law, issue a discussion document to the public, invite responses from the public, and uh, then analyse those responses to um, develop ideas for the direction of reform. Can you describe the main types of work that the Commission undertakes? Well, uh, in terms of the Act of Parliament which set us up, uh, we are responsible for considering reform of the whole of the law of Scotland. And uh, that, in fact, is the exact language used in the 1965 Act. So uh, obviously that is uh, an extensive remit. Um, how do we choose the projects that we're working on at a particular time? Well, again, that is built upon consultation. Uh, we work to programmes of law reform containing a number of projects, but those projects have been selected in consultation with the Scottish Government on the back of a public consultation exercise. So just now we're working on our ninth programme, uh, which we started last year and um, the, the programme was preceded by a consultation exercise in which we invited views from uh, everybody in our society as to what areas of the law uh, they thought uh, were appropriate for reform. And uh, depending on the responses which we get back, we will then uh, decide what to propose to the Scottish Government as possible topics for us to look at that has to be approved by the uh, government and then we uh, set about uh, these um, chosen areas. Uh, and what are the areas that you're working on at the moment? What we're doing at present is quite wide ranging. We have uh, a major project carried forward from the last programme um, on reform of compulsory purchase law. Uh, we have a big project on uh, reform of the law affecting movable transactions. That's particularly important, I think, for uh, the um, commercial community. Um, in addition to that, we are um, engaged in a long-running review of uh, contract law, a uh, kind of health check for Scots contract law to see that it is uh, in line with um, best practice internationally. Uh, and uh, particularly with um, developments uh, at the European level on the uh, draft common frame of reference. Uh, then we are looking also at um, some smaller areas uh, in uh, smaller projects, uh, still important. Um, we're, we're doing one on prescription or aspects of prescription and limitation following a decision of the Supreme Court. That's time limits for bringing proceedings in court. And uh, lastly, I am um, leading a project on reform of defamation law. You mentioned. I should also mention, Dean, sorry, forgive me. I should also mention that an important aspect of our work is um, in addition to these um, purely Scots law projects, joint work which we do on law uh, applying throughout the United Kingdom with our. Um, uh, uh, colleagues at the Law Commission for England and Wales. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the project on movable transactions, and I was very interested to read in your annual review um, uh, the 
observation that Scots law on the areas covered by that project is out of date and not sufficiently business friendly. And the review goes on to say reform in this area of commercial law is much needed to enhance the position of Scotland as a place to do business. And I was very interested in that um, observation. I don't know whether there's anything you, you, you would like to comment on about the role of the Scottish Law Commission in equipping Scotland to be, uh, as you put it, a place to do business. Yes, well, I mean, I think that is a, a good example of how we have to ensure that our work links appropriately with um, the interests of the wider community and uh, not just the business community because we're not purely focused on uh, commercial law but um, for a long time I think it has been felt in the commercial sector that uh, Scots law in that area particularly when it comes to the creation of securities and allowing people to uh, to borrow money on the strength of um, collateral from a uh, property which is not land and buildings, that our law in that area has fallen somewhat behind um, practice uh, uh, elsewhere in the world and indeed south of the border. So in developing our proposals for reform on a project like that, the project team will be working alongside um, an advisory group which uh, contains uh, representatives from uh, relevant interests, for example, from um, the financial services sector, uh, from uh, those representing commercial lenders, and that process of engagement with stakeholders is one that runs right through a project. You mentioned the, also your own uh, particularly interesting project on law of defamation and uh, uh, again going to the terms of the annual, annual review, I was interested in the observation that this is an area where the law is, uh, as you put it, fragmented and not uh, easily uh, accessible. And uh, again, I'd be interested in uh, your, your thinking about the, whether there are features of whether that illustrates features of um, our legal system which are relevant to the role the Law Commission plays. Yes, and that's a very interesting point. Uh, I think um, one of the particular challenges faced by a relatively small legal system such as ours is that, uh, at least in some areas of uh, work, the amount of case law generated will be relatively small. And that is so, uh, for example, when it comes to uh, defamation. Uh, nonetheless, this area is of uh, relevance and importance for everybody, particularly with the phenomenal growth of uh, the internet and uh, the use of social media. There's been major reform in England and Wales in the shape of a Defamation Act passed in 2013, and um, we are uh, considering to what extent it would be appropriate for Scots law to um, follow some of those reforms, although I emphasise that we're not regarding that as in any sense a blueprint, but um, we, are, we are examining the whole of Scots uh, defamation law to see uh, that it is uh, fit for purpose. You've described a number of the uh, projects that you're undertaking. Uh, how do you measure success? It's another uh, excellent question, if I may say so. Um, I think primarily the success of a law reform agency has to be gauged by reference to the uh, um, success rate in terms of its recommendations for reform being implemented by the legislator. Um, it is true that uh, there are perhaps subsidiary purposes of a law reform agency which also contribute to the development of the law. For example, our discussion papers and reports are quite frequently referred to by the courts and they may also assist uh, those studying the law or the academic community. But the primary purpose, I think, of the law reform agency and the uh, acid test of its worth is the extent to which it succeeds in uh, having its recommendations implemented. It's a perennial challenge for all law reform agencies throughout the world uh, because um, law reform may not always have um, 
political uh, priority for understandable reasons. And that's why an important aspect of our uh, function is to ensure that we develop strong working relationships with um, actually the two legislatures to whom we report, and I'll say about that and a little more about that in a moment, and uh, the two governments uh, to whom we report. And I mentioned two governments and two legislatures because we remain responsible uh, not just for areas of law which have been devolved to the Scottish Parliament, but also to areas of Scots law which are reserved to Westminster under the Scotland Act. And we're therefore an unusual uh, law reform agency in global terms because we are uh, answerable, if that's the right uh, way to put it, to not just one government and one legislature, but to two. Now, in, in relation to implementation, um, your annual report uh, reminds us that the Scottish Parliament's put in place uh, special procedures for uh, law commission uh, bills. How, how, how's that procedure working? Well, that was a procedure which um, we at the Commission uh, and my predecessors at the Commission particularly worked very hard to establish. Um, ironically, um, uh, after some years of devolution, the implementation rate in the Scottish Parliament uh, dropped off slightly, so we had to look to see how to improve that and the uh, result of these efforts has been the um, introduction of a new procedure in the Scottish Parliament for law reform measures. Uh, it uh, involves their being considered by a committee which has particular respons responsibility for law reform bills. Uh, it's called the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Uh, so far three bills have gone through it. Um, an important measure on uh, legal writings and counterpart execution, uh, particularly important to ensure that um, documents can be uh, executed electronically, uh, a measure on succession, and I think also significantly and interestingly, uh, a measure on consolidation of bankruptcy law. Um, so, so far, uh, the procedure has worked extremely well. Uh, we're grateful to the Scottish Government and to the uh, Parliament and the committee members for all the support they have given to it. The criteria uh, for um, law reform measures to go through this procedure, which does not in fact involve any of the normal parliamentary steps being overridden, it simply has them dealt with in a particular way. So there is full parliamentary scrutiny, but the, um, the criteria uh, are relatively narrow and they involve amongst other things the bill being uncontroversial also any measure on um, criminal justice cannot at present be uh, considered by that committee i think in time as uh, experiences um, developed it uh, will be for consideration whether these criteria might uh, perhaps be broadened you, you described the bankruptcy bill as in, an interesting example. Why did you say that? Well, I, I, say, I say that because um, consolidation of the law is within our statutory functions. That is, uh, pulling together in one accessible and, I hope, user-friendly uh, act uh, all the relevant law on a particular subject so that it's not scattered about different uh, statutes. Uh, it's been difficult for a number of reasons to uh, find parliamentary time for consolidation measures and uh, it's very encouraging to see that the new procedure has been successfully used to, uh, uh, to uh, bring about um, a useful consolidation measure in uh, that area. But that is lawyer's law, not a phrase I particularly like but um, nonetheless it's, it's one that's sometimes used in this context. What I would say though Dean is that um, our work shouldn't just be thought of as involving exclusively that type of technical uh, legal reform. We do also consider uh, projects with a wider social relevance, and the law of defamation indeed might fall within that category, as also would a project which is awaiting implementation 
on reform of the uh, law affecting adults with incapacity. Yes. And you touched on the question of criminal justice from time to time. Do you work on in the criminal justice yes. field as well? Yes. Yes, we do. And um, uh, that, that has, uh, in our 50-year history, been an important uh, strand of work. For example, the current legislation on sexual offences uh, originated in a Law Commission project. Yes. Um, your uh, annual um, uh, report from last year describes uh, the Commission's work. Is there any um, aspect of last year's activities that you're particularly proud of? Well, last, last year was our um, 50th anniversary and we marked that in a number of, uh, of ways. Uh, we were very pleased that uh, reflecting our dual responsibility both to the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government on the one hand and to the uh, Parliament at Westminster and the UK Government on the other that both the Secretary of uh, State for Scotland and the First Minister visited the Commission and uh, we had uh, excellent discussions with both of them about the place of law reform uh, in the modern system of government. We also hosted a, um, a major international conference of law reformers and uh, as a kind of um, fringe event um, uh, relating to the Commonwealth Law Conference um, it was an extremely interesting um, experience for us to learn how law reform is now being approached in different ways in different parts of the world. One thing that struck me about it was that um, some law reform agencies have been very creative in uh, their um, use of social media for the purpose of um, conducting consultation exercises in regard to some projects I'm not suggesting that that would necessarily work for all projects, but I think what it is important that we are aware of the um, uh, extensive reach of social media, which can allow a body such as ours to connect with a wider range of interests in society than has perhaps always been possible in the past. So we have uh, been um, looking at that uh, quite closely you may be uh, interested, uh, if not uh, surprised, to learn that we have um, a very high number of followers on our Twitter feed. And um, Twitter is something which has been used extensively in the academic community in Scotland for the dissemination and exchange of ideas, and it's, uh, it's something that, uh, that we are uh, encouraging. I see why the faculty Twitter feed is uh, co competitive with your own. Um, in, in terms of the substantive work that you did last year, are there, are there particular um, um, achievements or projects that you, 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 you felt were particularly significant? Yes. I think, I think the, first, the first bill which we put through the new procedure in the Scottish Parliament, the Legal Writings uh, Counterparts and Delivery Bill, was... Uh, was a significant achievement because it was the first measure to go through that uh, committee. It was uh, one for which there was wide stakeholder support. Um, commercial uh, law firms, for example, and others in the commercial community were keen to ensure that um, contracts which were made subject to Scots law uh, were not at any sort of disadvantage as compared with contracts made subject to the laws of other jurisdictions in regard to the way that they can be signed and uh, made effective. So that's allowing electronic uh, um, execution of such documents. Now that, that, that sounds very technical. Yes, it is. It is. But, 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 but um, mm -hmm. does it tie in with um, the discussion we had earlier about um, yes. making Scotland uh, and Scots law yes. a, 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 a place to do business? Yes, very much so. And uh, it was a point which the committee in the Parliament was extremely uh, interested in. And they saw, they saw the importance of ensuring that, um, that Scots law was on a par with uh, practices in the uh, commercial world elsewhere. I think I would also mention, so far as last year is concerned, the reform of insurance law, which uh, resulted in a major piece of legislation passed at Westminster. That was a joint project which we were doing with uh, our colleagues at the Law Commission for England and Wales. Um, and it, 
it, it involved um, significant reforms to uh, a body of law which affects really everybody. Yes. Um, we've thought about, we've talked a little bit about last year. Um, what's the greatest challenge for the Commission looking forward to the, to, 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 to the next year? I think there are a number of challenges. I'm myself uh, interested in uh, exploring ways in which we might improve uh, our um, ways of working with outside interests uh, so far as the selection of our projects for future programmes is concerned. Um, I think we, uh, we should be um, taking the opportunity to uh, re-examine our relationship with the Scottish Government to ensure that we um, get a, an appropriate level of support and what I might call buy-in from the Scottish Government before projects are selected to ensure that the prospects of implementation are uh, as good as they can be. I'm also interested in the idea of developing collaborative arrangements between the uh, Law Commission and the university law schools. There's a fantastic pool of academic talent available on a very wide range of subjects in the university law schools. There's always been a strong relationship between the Law Commission and the academic community. And I think there are ways in which we can um, consider harnessing that talent to support uh, to support our projects. Does the uh, practicing community of uh, advocates and solicitors have a role to play? Yes, I mean, I, 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 I think I should stress how uh, uh, substantial the contribution made by both the faculty and the Law Society is to all our work, and we're extremely grateful for this. Um, many uh, members of the practicing profession uh, give up time to uh, contribute to our projects, they read our discussion papers, they contribute to our work and um, they serve on our advisory groups. But something that struck me in my two years as chairman of the Law Commission is uh, the enormous amount of goodwill which exists towards the Commission uh, out there in the wider community, particularly uh, in, the, uh, in the legal community. In, in your um introduction to the uh, annual uh, report, you express a commitment to modernisation of the Commission. Uh, what do you have in mind? I think, I think um, we, as any public body requires to do uh, in the present challenging uh, economic uh, situation, uh, we require constantly to be uh, examining the ways that we work to ensure that we're making the best possible use of public money and that we are uh, doing our work in the most uh, efficient uh, mm -hmm. and modern manner. Um, I am a strong believer in the uh, view that the Law Commission must be outward facing and um, anybody who um, is familiar with our building in Causeway site would, would perhaps agree that we do not inhabit an ivory tower but any lingering misconception which there might be about that uh, needs to be put to rest. We are uh, a body which is firmly rooted in uh, practical law reform. We do not operate on a theoretical level. Of course it's important for us to analyse the law rigorously so that our proposals and ideas for reform are soundly based, but at the same time we have to ensure that we're engaging effectively with the outside world so that what we are proposing is going to work in practice. You described the 50th birthday celebrations. Was there a particular highlight of the year as far as you personally were concerned? I think perhaps um, the visit of so many law reformers from uh, across the Commonwealth and uh, the conference that we hosted for them was a highlight. Um, uh, we're extremely grateful to the Scottish Government for the support they provided for that and for the uh, dinner which we had in Edinburgh Castle um, at which the Lord Advocate spoke and uh, expressed the Government's strong support for law reform. So that was a highlight um, and uh, it, it was an opportunity also to look back at our 50 year history and to see how much 
the Scottish Law Commission has achieved in so many areas. Um, the legal landscape in Scotland today would, I think, look very different had it not been for the, uh, the work of the Commission and my predecessors there. If one thinks, for example, of family law or property law or even criminal law, um, the Commission has promoted systematic reform in, in, in those areas to, to name but three. Well, and thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Dean. It's been it's been a great pleasure to uh, to uh, uh, have this discussion with you, and uh, I would encourage all uh, members of faculty and others to um, uh, take an interest in the uh, in the work of the commission. Thank you.